Hello YouTube, welcome to Opera Show. Today I'm joined by Barbara Hannigan. Hello Barbara. Hello Tom. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about how Barbara got involved with classical music, with uh, singing, conducting. Um, before we continue, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, share with all your friends and uh, we'll continue. So Barbara, yeah. what was your first memory of classical music? How did you first get involved? Sesame Street. I think it was, I think it might have been Horowitz playing on Sesame Street. And in fact, it's not 100% my memory because my mother tells the story that I was absolutely fixated with seeing him play. I think it was a children's show like Sesame Street and seeing him play and I was just sitting there in front of the TV, you know, completely transfixed. But actually, you know, we had a piano and my mother used to play every night because when she had her first child, which was my sister, 14 months later, she had me and my twin. So she had like three children under the age of two. You know? <laughs> and she'd finally get us to bed at night and then she would go downstairs and she would play the piano. And she played the water music and lots of other classical pieces and we would go to sleep with that sound in our ears. So. Yeah, I mean, it's always been part of my life. And so you've had that always part of your life? Yeah. Um, how did you first start singing? What was the first sort of um, discovery that you had a, a talent? Well, again, with my mom. Um, and she has tape recordings of us. She taught us to sing. Um, before we could even speak, we could sing melodies. And she has these little cassette tapes of us doing that. Um, and then as far as like when it was clear that I had a real or a possible voice, of course like school productions and things like that in Nova Scotia, I come from this little village and we had a great music teacher. And then around age 15, uh, I wanted to take private singing lessons. And at that point, the teacher said to my mother, um, it was a woman named Sylvia McDonald, and she had studied in Germany and she lived in Halifax and she said to my mother that I could have a career as a solo singer if I wanted to. That she felt there was an, enough of an instrument there that it could be built if I was willing to do the work. Yeah. yeah. And so the next stage, <clears throat> now you're a professional obviously, um, how did you get from being told you could be a solo singer to, mm. to actually starting having a career? What was the, the steps taken? Well, I. I actually left home before I would even finished um, secondary school. I left home at age 17, so I went from Halifax to Toronto, uh, which is two hours away by airplane. I uh, lived with my aunt there and went to a performing arts high school. And at that point, I started working with a teacher who really started to build my voice um, because I was actually ready to do the work at that point. At 15, I was still everything was too easy and I didn't have an instrument that was really you know ready to start growing and then at 17 I started to do some work and then I after that year I went to university stayed with the same teacher and I worked really hard I mean I didn't have the best voice in in my class I had a good voice it was not particularly developed at that point I needed time but it was the work ethic and I learned how to schedule my time. I learned how to schedule practice sessions. And I would also, you know, I would go to the gym and I would have a certain time every day I'd go to the gym. I'd have the time that I'd go to the library and study scores. I went to concerts all the time. So I just started feeding my system and feeding the entire artistic soul. And I was incredibly hungry because I'd come, you know, from a village where, you know, it wasn't it wasn't at our fingertips to go hear a symphony orchestra concert mm -hmm. or, or a classical music concert so when I lived in Toronto I was like wow you know there's so much going on I went to concerts every night and instrumental concerts and dance concerts and theater everything I just I wanted to learn and I think you know the first professional engagement for me was in contemporary music uh, it was a crazy piece for someone with a crazy high voice which I happened to have and that was the beginning for me. And I thought, oh, I, I love 
this contemporary music because I think I was a bit afraid of tradition and I was afraid that I didn't fit in or that I wasn't sophisticated enough but with the contemporary music there was no tradition there was no way that you had to sing this piece and that helped me build my courage mm. later I applied that courage to the more traditional rap and so through discovering your courage um, discovering what music suited you mm. did you have a team of people that you relied on as you mentioned your teacher mm. um, do you have other people that you've worked with pianists or mm. anything that you maybe you still work with yeah I think uh, I think it's really important to have a team around you as a as a young singer but then also throughout your professional career so most singers um, take singing lessons until they stop singing and then we usually have a coach or a couple of pianists that we work with. I don't work so often with pianists uh, to coach rep, but I did when I prepared some, some of the big roles. Um, I have my doctor, like my voice doctor, who really knows how my vocal cords are supposed to look, you know, so that when something is not right, I have someone that I really trust mm. who has photographs of my vocal cords. Um, and also on my team are a couple of friends who have nothing to do with music and a couple of family members who care about me just being a healthy person and not showing up for the performance. Mm -hmm. Also my management because, you know, I have a team within my management who I really also trust. But I think in a way even more or at least equally important to that are the people that are my mentors, like a couple of musicians who, if I talk to them, if I call them on the phone and I talk to them for five minutes about anything, it brings me back really to the center of why I'm a musician. And it's not about being in the best voice for tonight. It's not about, uh, you know, any of the difficulties, day-to-day -day difficulties. It's really like why Am I a musician? And, and what, what is my primal, very intimate, personal connection to music? And so I have a couple of mentors that help me come back to that just by their presence in my life. And are they the people that inspire you? If you, if you were to think of people that inspire you to continue yeah. <clears throat> with the mentors? The... Yeah, one of, one of them is Ryan DeLeo. He's a pianist and conductor and a composer. And he's 79 now, so he's, he's one. Um, I, I would say he's the, maybe the most important at this time for me, at, at this point in my life. Um, and it's funny because I think like finding mentors is a talent. And it's a talent that can be developed. Mm. And I think younger artists... They, they need to develop it because the loneliness that you have when you have the career and the isolation that you can have, it can really be debilitating. So you need to, to develop your system of, like it's like, a, it's like an artist's palette with all different colors mm. and you need all those different colors. You need all those different people around you to help you, you know, make the color that you are, right? And uh, yeah, so... It's, it's really important for me. I, I can't, I mean, I like to be alone, but I need to know that if I need to have other people or talk to somebody, that that's possible. Yeah. yeah. And finally, um, if you were to think of a couple of operas or pieces that you would want a first-time opera goer to go and see, what would you, what would you recommend? Whoa, first-time opera goer. Well, to me, it's not just the piece. It's like the whole, uh, who directed it, who sang it, who conducted it, etc, etc. And, um, like, I like the pieces that are, I don't like so much funny operas. I prefer, like, where people, you know, where there's heartbreak or somebody kills somebody else or, like, the really extreme emotions. It's not that I like the violence, but I just like the extreme emotion combined with singing. So, like for me, my favorite parts to sing, my favorite part is Lulu. And I did 
two productions of it, but only one is, is on a DVD. And I had to be on point shoes for that. And I had never been on point shoes and I was like already 40 years old. And the director wanted me to be um, a ballet dancer who uh, had never become the professional she wanted, but that was her dream. So I would say that one would be pretty interesting to watch. I think a lot of people enjoyed that, that were not opera people, like real yeah. theater people. Yeah. I would say maybe that one. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Barbara and I are going to film a few more videos now. If this is the sort of thing you enjoy, please subscribe. Check out some of the other videos we've got and come back soon. Thank you.